now let's see you do it, Rody. Now let's see you try and get me. Well, I'm just going to say welcome back to Podcast the Hero. Uh, this interview is brought to you by Magnum Condoms. Okay, do you have an average size penis and a massive con... <laughs> oh, fuck, I fucked it up. <laughs> start, you can start over. It's so early enough. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't write it down. I was just trying to go off the top of my head. I was trying to say, <laughs> this interview is brought to you by Magnum Condoms. Do you have an average to small penis and a huge complex? Magnum Condoms. Nice. Right? Because they're not that much bigger. I don't no. know. I've never seen one in real life. Oh, they're humongous. Oh, for real? Yeah. Have you, have you, <laughs> have you ever seen a hot air balloon? <laughs> yeah. It's just massive. Holy shit. Yeah. Now I'm going to read uh, the intro I wrote for you. It was the year of our Lord, 2002, in the small village of New Bedford, Massachusetts. And the Wishmaster had been hard at work, leading the young into their premature but inevitable deaths. A young drummer boy found himself in the direct path of the with- Wishmaster. Foolishly, when called upon, he made a wish, and, the- and a foolish wish it was. He wished for a Dr. Pepper flavored slushy from 7-Eleven. Little is known about what happened next, but what is known is that the wish, as all other wishes granted by the old djinn, brought about the death of the sweet boy drummer. Thus, Trevor Riley, drummer of Smacking Isaiah, was no more. But from the Dr. Pepper ashes rose Trevor Riley, guitarist of a Wilhelm scream. Praise be the Wishmaster, and welcome to the podcast, Trevor. (laughs) Thank you very much. Hauntingly accurate. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing. People think I'm just making those fucking things up, but the Wishmaster is quite powerful, and the movie oh, franchise the wish- is fantastic. <laughs> oh, the Wishmaster. Oh yeah, Robert Robert England. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that? I think is, was he the Wishmaster, or am I making? I don't that know. Up? We'll find out. Uh, we'll Google that, it. Robert England's like Freddy Krueger, isn't he? Yeah, Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you're the first person to comment on Like, I always include the Wishmaster in it, but you're the first person to care about the Wishmaster. <laughs> I owe the Wishmaster everything. Everything. <laughs> I love those movies. That one when he goes to prison and the guy's like, I wish my lawyer would go fuck himself. And he's like, your wish is granted, man. <laughs> they come to the jail cell and they're like, hey, dude, your lawyer wants to see you. <laughs> they go in there and he's like, fucking himself with his legs behind his back. <laughs> I love those Wishmaster movies. Andrew oh, Dibble is Andrew the Wishmaster. Oh, um, Andrew Dibble. But it was a Wes Craven produced <laughs> thing. So you got that that's, whole connection that's there. What, yeah, that was the connection. That's, yeah. yeah. Oddly enough, um, he is, uh, Andrew Divoff is a Venezuelan gentleman uh, who Almost exclusively plays Russians. Is the Wishmaster Russian? I don't know. It would make but, sense. He's quite evil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All everything is a Russian. It's on brand. Yep. There you go. Yeah. So well, that's, how, we, that's outstanding. We toured together in like 2005, and then again like 12 or 13 years later. Yeah. Um, First of all, significant gap between those years. Second of all, I was looking at the internet today, and it has apparently been scrubbed clean of any memory of either of those tours. And by the internet, I mean Wikipedia. Neither yours nor ours have any evidence that those tours ever happened. Yeah, we're going to have to rewrite Wikipedia for for those forgotten years. Uh, yeah, do you especially any, uh, th- those are some fucking those are awesome tours, man. It was so awesome. Uh, yeah, those were a ton of touring fun. with you guys. Yeah, I couldn't believe I, I couldn't believe how young you guys were. <laughs> I was like, holy fuck, dude! These guys are like these guys are shit hot we, at their instruments, and <laughs> you sing like fucking man. <laughs> I couldn't believe that shit. I was like, I was like, oh yeah. I was like, oh yeah. So you guys want to go like get a beer or something? It was like, oh no. I'm like. I'm like 17, bro. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's funny, man. He's like, um, oh, yeah. All, all while doing this the whole time. It's good. <laughs> Not me. I was, <laughs> I was bad then. Freak. I'm worse now. But, um, yeah, I remember the... Like, you put the on a more... fucking show, man. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you I what? remember the more recent tour we did, I was just like, 
sitting there being like, I don't know if these guys are going to remember us at all. And then it was like the first day Nuno walked in the back and he was just like, what's up, everybody? It's so good to see you guys again. And you were shortly there behind him. And it was just like, holy fuck. These guys are the nicest guys on earth. <laughs> but yeah. It was that's the power. Awesome. Uh, that's the power of music. And then when, I mean, to get all like sappy right off, right off the bat or whatever, but like, it's one of my favorite things about just touring, you know, like, you know, you won't see somebody forever and then you kind of, it's like, oh, oh, I play with those guys. Oh shit. You know, and to always be like some, you know, N- 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 Nuno's always the one to kind of like get in there and just like break the, break the ice. Ever since we've been kids, he's always been the one to kind of, you know, get it, you know, get in there and make you, you know, make you feel comfortable, you know, oh, which yeah. is great for, it's great for a guy like me. Cause I'm like, I'm like super introverted guy. So, you know, it's like, oh yeah, you know, lead the way, you know, but we, we've always talked like fondly about you guys and, you know, thinking about a lot of the, you know, the times, you know, you, you, you don't, you know, you run into somebody and it's like, no, we, 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 we get the, the coolest gigs. Like we get to play music for people. Like this is like fucking <laughs> out of, this is out of control, yeah. you know? You it's know, like and, camp friends, right? When yeah. you go to summer camp and then you, you you only see your friends at summer camp because they live in a different state or a different town or whatever, but it's just like, it's like no time passed. It's camp That's friends. true. And then sometimes you leave camp for the last time, oh. right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, I think about that constantly when I'm like saying goodbye to buddies, like especially people in Europe. <laughs> this is maybe going to be a bummer for people to hear, but like be like, <laughs> I'm probably never going to see this motherfucker again. <laughs> <laughs> like I never have like uh, like with Europe, anyways. Like I'm always like I don't know, if, I don't know when the next time we're coming back to Europe. Um, I'm sure you guys have your fucking noses to the grindstone when it comes to like touring and shit, though. So I'm sure you don't have similar feelings. Yeah, I mean, we're at, yeah, at this at this. I, I don't know how many times we've been to Europe. It's just like it's almost like, oh yeah, it's like automatically. Oh yeah, it'll be a given. Because for a while there, we're going to Europe. Like I, I was seeing like you know these other countries way more than I'm seeing like our own you know like i'm with, yeah. like for a while they were going like three times a year maybe sometimes four times a year wow. which yeah. is like nuts you know and i i i don't it just kind of like popped off for us at a at a time where like touring in the states wasn't you know and mm-hmm. i think after a while you know things flip but yeah i i yeah i don't know like it's you know it's like oh yeah well go germany oh yeah yeah we're gonna be there in like freaking five months but now that you th- now that you say you know you talk about it yeah i mean any time could be the last time yeah so you gotta have you know there was definitely we yeah. had a period where it was like it felt like europe all the time like you go and you do the like summer festivals but then you got to go back and you got to do like a headline tour and then like a fucking main support tour and like just felt like europe all the time um but like post covid where everything is just like so much more expensive it's like anything where we got to cross an ocean is just a lot more difficult to do and i'm sure you guys are feeling that same sort of thing oh yeah definitely it's like you know we definitely have to be a lot a lot more choosy about what we do i mean if you asked any of the guys in the band i mean like like i'm gonna lie to you like it would be like hey trev you know we're going to play this thing and we're making no money like like I'm like, yeah, cool. Let's do it. You know, like, I, like mo- yeah. most most of us are like that. You know, luckily luckily we have you know managers that you know can do the you know the number crunching you know for us. But yeah, I, I I'm 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 privy to some of those like you know negotiations or whatever it is or saying okay we break down this we break down that. But once it once it once he starts you know once ray our manager just starts talking about some of that stuff like i just kind of my mind just like drifts away and i'm like oh yeah that's this other thing Dude, it's this other thing me, where like that happened to me literally today we had a meeting to like discuss the finances of the last tour and like how things all shook out and i was just like cleaning my pool the whole time just being like, I, don't, I don't fucking know and then afterwards i had to like message tim and be like hey could you clarify like a couple things for me <laughs> i was not listening <laughs> yeah 
Could you summarize? Yeah. We, I, like, I think it's the best we're to at. stay out of the financial stuff because it's like, I don't know, it's gross. It, like, it kind of like, <laughs> it, it feels like it cheapens, it cheapens it a little bit to me, you know, like, I don't know, as much as it's like, it's the job and like, it is a job. I don't want it to be a job. I want to just like be making cool tunes and playing fucking rock shows and like, that's it, having fun. But then. Yeah. Yeah. But then my oh, son really? needs to play baseball, and I'm like, oh, I don't have any fucking money. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, it, especially like when with, we have like a couple tours that like I can't we 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 like just be amazing like you know place that we really want to go, but like we like we have to wait for like the uh, like the headliner of this like overseas festival to decide if they want to do it. Mm. You know, so like that's like another thing, and like. That's another thing, like, after the first couple, like, back and forths about that, I'm like, oh, can you please take me off of this email chain? Like, I don't yeah. care. Like, and like <laughs> tell me when it's really, tell me when it's happening. <laughs> Just let me know when it's done. What's the final yeah. decision? Yeah. Yeah. Am I going yeah. or not going? Yeah. <laughs> um, so anniversary tours have been sort of a, a big thing lately, right? Protest had the Fortress X and... Uh, I remember like the Get Up Kids 20th anniversary of something to write home about. I saw them on that tour. It's a big thing. Like, how do you guys feel about that? Um, I asked this specifically because somebody from the PTH Discord was like, are they ever going to do like an anniversary of like Mute Print or whatever where they play the whole record through? Um, and just like, I know some people are like, yeah, it makes sense. We do it. It's, you know, people are going to go nuts for it. Um, other people are like, yeah, I don't, I haven't played those songs in 20 years and I have no idea how to do it and that's not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, for it's like, whenever we have done it a few times and like for our, for our first record, Mute Print, we kind of kept it local. So we did like a, you know, a couple of big Boston shows, that kind of thing. And I don't remember which anniversary that was. I don't know if it was the 10th or the 15th, like, that's another thing we're like so we're really hard on our sleeve kind of people with our music or whatever but like we're so we're not sentimental at all like yeah. i don't even know how long we've been a band for you know like we probably could have done like a 25th <laughs> anniversary tour but then again like what it what's like a good number is it 20 years or is it 25 yeah. or 15 yeah. or 10 you know uh but we we have done it before and like Ain't gonna lie, the first couple times, like it felt really good. It was just kind of like a, you know, almost like an out of out of body experience. I don't know if you felt the same way, Rody. Like, um, almost like whoa, we're like, it's like it's like ultra sentimental mode, right? Almost, right? Oh, for at sure. certain times, but like, I really, I have some great memories. I mean, of of doing some like like the first time we ever sold out, like um. Uh, a club in in Hollywood. Uh, it was the Roxy, and we did like uh, we we did our second album, Ruiner. Yeah. And the Flatliners also played with us, and they did they they did uh, um, I think the was it the Great Awake? I think yeah. It, the, yeah, we both probably. had like it, we both had like anniversaries around the yeah. same time, so that that was like. I was like several years back, but I'll never forget that, you know. And like, well, you're you're talking about a show right now that I know a couple people and myself would be very excited to see that <laughs> fucking show. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, Fritzy's sitting here at half mass. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, full. That, that's oh, that's sorry. like that's a top top tier show right there for me. Yeah, that's fucking amazing. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, and the Flatliners. Anytime we could play with those guys, it's like God. a joy, you know. They're kind of like you guys, you know. Like we were, like we were probably were in our fucking forties, <laughs> you know, when we met them or so shit. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, I can't, I can't get in the club. Like, why not? Like, oh, I'm like only like I'm only twenty. I'm not twenty one yet. <laughs> like, what the yeah. fuck? Dude, we this came up with those guys. Like we used to play with them like constantly when we were both of us. We were just kids. Um, we'd be playing in like weird little halls and church basements and shit like that. And just like, and then we just sort of, our paths diverged and we didn't really uh, see each other for a long, long time. And then it's like, now we've started to like, sort of like see them again. And it's fucking amazing. Cause uh, they're one of my favorite bands. Flatties are 
just fucking oh god yeah good. oh god yeah. yeah and i'm always i'm that friend i'm that guy who's like you know with every friend's album like i'll be like oh dude like i'll be like annoying i'll be like punishing like my dad is be like <laughs> oh dude oh that song chameleon skin bro <laughs> like Fuck, dude! I was in Home Depot. I was in Home Depot the other day, bro. I thought I thought they were playing it on the foot, but it was, I guess it was some other band trying to rip you guys off, bro. Because it was like <laughs> Chameleon Skin's a fucking banging hit song and shit, you know. And, and I, like, I'm that guy. I like I'll never let up, you know. And it'll be all uncomfortable and shit. <laughs> but I really feel that way about like from that. I mean, their their new record, I think, is just a complete banger. Oh my god, it's mm-hmm. like one of my favorites of last year. Yeah. yeah, easily. I, I think it's great that you're that way because there's too many people that like, I don't know, feel like jealous or weird and like f- don't fucking say it. You know, we don't say it to each other's bands enough. And it's like if you fucking love someone's record, gush on them, dude. Fucking gush on them. Totally. And it's like, I don't know. Maybe that's just in my experience because ain't nobody gushing on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, you're a mad gushable, bro. <laughs> You guys are mad gushable, man. You guys are mad gushable. Yeah, so I, 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 I have no fucking cool. I all that like uh, weird cool guy shit. Like I over that when I was like seventeen, you know, like yeah, you know no. what I mean. Like I, uh, I, I fucking massive music fan first. You know, yeah. like I'm fucking just love music. Like I just you know, um, you know, and when you when you when you meet people. A music that you really like and then they turn out to be just like the best people <laughs> it's like fuck dude you, you yeah. know that that brings them to like legendary status in my eyes you know like it fucking forever. enhances the music right yeah it really does yeah. so speaking of music on the latest record you're doing a lot more singing like i feel like in the past you were singing uh you were doing like kind of I would call it like there were songs where you were singing like harmonies and then had little vocal features throughout. But now yeah. it's like you're like sharing the vocal duties. Like that is yeah. that was that an intentional um like was that an, a, something that you did intentionally or was it just something that you were writing the songs and they came out that way? I think yes and no. Uh back in the day back, back when I met the Wishmaster. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you know, back back then, like I sang, pro like a lot. Pro, like Nuno is still, you know, our singer, of course, and yeah. like an amazing singer, mm-hmm. all, always since I met him. Um, but I was writing so much, even back then, that they were just. I don't know if he could have physically sang that much because they would be singing like, you know, it, you know, th- th- this is like the early two thousands or whatever, right? Where like. Very interesting time in music when you had like a lot of a, a lot of indie rock bands, like like emo indie rock bands. Not emo in the sense that you call emo now, I guess like metalcore kind of like emo yeah. or, or, yeah. or whatever. But back then, like you know, it was sort of like a uh, like a band called a, like a great, great Canadian band that comes to mind, Grade. You know, like then back in the day, like you know, and and uh, of course, Hot Water Music. You know, like these mm-hmm. like trade offs. You know. Right. I mean, I don't like my voice at all. Like, like you know, it's like I, I, I wish I had like half the voice that 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 Nuno did, you know. But I think just like artistically, like back in the day, I just ended up singing a fuck ton, you know. Um, as time went on, like, and also like our 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 original bassist John Tevs, he's like he was like the best singer out of all, like ability wise, like insane singer. He could kind of like. He could harmonize with anyone, and you would, it, and it, it wouldn't be like, "Who's that guy?" You know, you know what I mean. He was just so, just yeah, melded yeah. so good with Had anyone. An ability you know, to blend it, yeah. Yeah. Oh God, Bill Stevenson called him Tone Robot in the studio <laughs> because he just kind of show up and he's like, "Okay, I'm harmonizing with Trev," and he'd get into Trev mode. I'm harmonizing with Nuno. He'd get into Nuno mode. You no, know, so yeah. like. It was like my best friend growing up. So like we were constant with like when we're writing when we're writing songs together and stuff. Like it's me and him singing with each other, you know. And uh, on the Smack and Isaiah stuff, there was a lot of that. So it was sort of like three lead singers. And of course, like I said, 
back in the day where where we were so influenced by a lot of bands that had multiple singers in yeah. the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know, that's I uh, love that stuff. Like I love when there's multiple singers and they're throwing it around. And I think that you and Nuno together, like yeah. he's got that like gruff fucking balls to the walls, fast, fast, fast. And then you're cleaning her up a little higher. It's like a beautiful combination of things. It's like the exact right fucking formula for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks for saying that, man. Is it like I? But the way my dad would say it, he was like, oh, you're the, Trev, you're the Mick Jones and Nuno's the Joe Strummer, you know? Like, <laughs> since we were kids, like, my dad yeah. would come down, you know, dad would come down in the basement and just stop us and say, hey, you know? <laughs> Either say something like that or he'd say, like, uh, oh, you know what song you guys should cover? Police on my back. You know, he'd, like, say <laughs> something. Okay. You know, he just drop some, like, uh, just drop some punk songs on us. Cover. And, you know, so, like... <clears throat> When it came time to do this record, um, I kind of see like the, the the way that we kind of write. It's sort of like almost like a, whether I'm writing the songs or Nuno's writing the songs, you know, lyrically. Um, mm -hmm. Like, it's sort of like an autobiographical thing, sort of yeah. like oh, where 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 we're at right now. You know? yeah, yeah. And I th I think with these with these new songs, like. Um, I think I leaned into like my like alternative rock uh, Trev mode <laughs> more than usual <laughs> on it, um, and something that Nuno really embraced. You know, Nuno likes my voice. You know, he he he's like, hey Trev, why don't you do this? Why don't you do this line? You know, I don't you do. You know, how about you do these lines? You know, so that was a little bit new for us uh, mm -hmm. in the modern age of the band. You know, because when John Tevs left the band after our second record, that, that was sort of, to me, that was like half my voice, if that makes any yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. You know, and N Nuno can go, Nuno can go command like a crowd, you know what I mean? But for me, like, I didn't realize how much I really uh, relied upon John's voice to give me like that confidence and that kind of like... uh you know, whatever the case may be, you know, mm -hmm. and plus that, and plus when he left the band, we got Brian Robinson, you know, the, the pride yeah. of Oakville, Ontario in the oh, band. Yeah. So, <laughs> so like my whole thing was like, fuck dude, like we better, let's bring the balls, you know? And if you're going to bring the balls, like, I don't know if you're going to have like Trev singing, <laughs> singing a, a fuck ton of it, you know? So <laughs> that was another thing. I kind of, kind of got off on like writing some more like heavy shit, you know? And around yeah. that time, that's that's also when we were like playing with like bands like you guys, you know, and mm -hmm. seeing how like seeing how like pummeling you could be, and it's like, oh fuck yeah, I want to like, you know, rock out this rock out this way. You know, you guys have an incredible uh, ability to fit on any like harder fucking yeah. lineup, right? Like it's like you you're rooted in punk, surely rooted in punk, but then it's like you've got a lot of harmonized lead parts particularly on uh, party crasher that it's like it sounds like you could fucking play with iron maiden you could play with like uh judas priest or something like that and then yeah. with the newer stuff it's got like more like anthemic rock you know what i mean like it's like you got those like fucking queen harmonies happening all over everything <laughs> yeah. and it's like yeah, yeah. it's bigger it's like uh, it could fit on a much more uh, just like a rock fucking bill, you know what I mean? Like not metal, not punk, just rock. It's a yeah. you guys are have an amazing ability to fit. Like you could tailor your set to just about any sort of uh, rock and roll, aggressive music sort of set that you would be on. Uh, I think that's incredible. I think that's the fucking best. Thanks, yeah. man. That's def. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you, guys. I've been, like I, I with with that thing. I'm oh, sorry, Fritz. No, go ahead, go. I was just, you. Yeah, I was just saying like my. I always t tell people like my my ultimate uh, bill would be you guys, PTH and Propagandy, because there's like this Man. like that'd be fun. Like uh, this meshing of punk rock that I love, technical skill and ability, and like progressive aspects, right? All three of you guys have like some prog stuff, progressive aspects to the music. It's all has, yeah. whether it's 
PTH and being more of prog metal, and, but it's still like a punk rock sensibility to it. And like, it just, it all fits together for me personally. That would be like, like dream show, right? Um, it's an amazing, I, that's, that's a dream show for me. I, no, <laughs> I mean, fuck, that's a, that'd be the shit. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking would love that as well. Where do you, like, where do your prog influences come from? Like, you guys got, like, techie shit all throughout. Like, is that, like, I don't know. Does that come from punk bands? Does that come from metal bands? Does that come from, where does it come from? I've honestly just kind of got into prog, like, like the prog metal stuff, like, in, in, in recent years. I think in, for, for our past records, I think for me, like, uh, I sort of think of it like, you know, listen to so much like shit. And when you put all that shit together, it could end up being some weird shit, you know? Yeah. Especially like, like, uh, late nineties, early two thousands. There were some like really interesting fucking bands. Like, like, you know, even, even like a band like, um, and I'm not saying like a, this is just a band that comes to mind, like a band that sprouted a lot of other bands, mm -hmm. um, and at the drive-in, I always think of them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, that's an interesting fucking band. Oh yeah. Like oh yeah, for sure. Like like musically, vocally, everything, mm -hmm. and I, and there were a lot of bands. You know, obviously they weren't like the mega, you know, uh, name that they are that they I guess they became after they broke up, right? Yeah. Um yeah. for the most part. Uh but back then, like the scene that they were in, I mean so eclectic. Like yeah. Yeah. It, you know, and a lot of the bands, like even when we signed to Nitro back in the day, uh I thought of this band today. They're a band called The Letters Organize. And band like i think they only did one record and they, they were like ni ni you know nitro is gonna be like oh fuck like this is the this is the they're they're at the drive-in you know like Dex mm. dexter to holland was like fuck yeah you know like this is gonna be like the breakout um they didn't ever end up happening but they were just as cool you know they're oh, really? fucking cool as fuck band they're super cool really interesting shit and uh i sort of learned and then that opened me up to a different like thing, like you know, like uh, bands like the the Chariot. Oh yeah, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Right? just like fucking heavy ass shit. We're just like fucking really interesting songs. Not really like verse chorus, verse chorus like type of type of songs. Mm -hmm. But it'd yeah. be like you know, sort of sort of like bands bands like that. So and the Chariot's like the greatest fucking live band to ever play, dude. Oh yeah, dude. They were so, so much fun to watch. Oh dude, so sick. I got like uh. Like in that 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 video where like they, they're it's like one I think it's like one shot it's oh, like it's, one yeah, the continuous, continuous thing. take through the studio right 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 yeah 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 I I we we got to, uh, when we were touring with uh, uh, the Cancer Bats uh, I think uh, some at some point last year and I had and I had I didn't know until like the last day of the tour that 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 Stevis uh, that they're one of their new guitarists. Uh, was yeah. in the fucking chariot and I was like holy yeah. fuck oh dude like learning like, learn that shit the last day I was like holy fuck bro like oh man like you know I was just talking about that you know that video and shit but I don't know to get back to the, like the topic or whatever like uh, I don't know like what, what, there's certain times in my life where like I can probably pinpoint oh fuck this band had a massive influence on like what we do as a band right Mm -hmm. So I could I could name I could name bands like you know for early on like the Boston's, oh yeah, uh, the yeah. Money Money Boston's, like for me I was never like a, a big ska band or necessarily like didn't like bands just because they were like local to us you know what I mean like mm -hmm. for for me even if you take the horns out of it take all that out of it it's just some sick fucking catchy ass. Fucking, yeah. like sing at your dinner table with your family. Fucking songs. Oh yeah. Even like going back in the day, like, and that's without without like it being a part of a scene or whatever, you know. And it's like a band like that, and then there's like bands like uh, 
we were just getting out of high school a big band that had a big influence on me like along with iron maiden would be uh uh at the gates and in flames oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. those are like two bands that i got into like the same weekend like <laughs> what <laughs> you know and i was like i was like what the fuck bro like this is great like at at, at one point it's kind of like uh medieval acoustic medieval music and then at the next time it's just like it's the catchiest the catchiest fucking shit i mean yeah it's like Dude, that's that's amazing because it's songs. like yeah yeah because it's like now that you're saying it it's like i'm thinking to like some of the lyrics that you and nuno have composed and it's like they're so dark and i never like like now that you mention it it's like you take all the influences and you smash them together and then you find something unique within that right and it's like i'm starting to like get a feeling for where some of the some of the why you guys are the way you are which is fucking awesome you know like oh, i would have never thought like, in flames oh in flames like me you know like you know that kind of like that 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 alone along with this Ingve Malmsteen VHS uh, <laughs> video that I like tried to watch it was more like comedic value than actually learning something but I, along with you know some the occasional thing like that that you know in fucking propaganda yeah yeah I, to me for my money there's no better band yeah. ever yeah I mean, they're, in any they're, era, yeah, agreed completely. Any era. Yeah, and, like they've just and like they've grown with everyone. Like they've, they, it's still fun to go listen back to the old stuff. It's awesome to listen to the new stuff. They're so like, you can't call them a punk band. You can't call them a metal band. You can't call them a thrash band because they're all those things and more. They're just, I think they're the most yeah. important band, right? I agree. I agree, a hundred percent. Like that, there's no, there's no other band out there. Like for my money, that every album they come out with, it's like fuck, dude. Like I'm <laughs> saying to myself, thank you, thank you for letting me in on this. Yeah. You no, know, like thank you for sharing this, guys. Like that's how I feel when I like when I like all throughout my life. You know, yeah. and talk about lyrics. I mean, oh, fuck, dude, the, like both those guys hilarious. are masters. Yeah. Oh, they're hilarious. They're dark. Mm -hmm. they're, yeah. they're like firmly tongue in cheek. Yeah, um, they can get like when personal needs to be. and emotional. They can get completely Everything. unemotional and like you know, it's like the political <laughs> dissection of something. Um, yeah, they're fucking incredible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm never not impressed and like just like fucking astounded by what they what they do when they and you know to this day when they come out with new shit which is really which is really important because to, to to the kind of music at at i don't even know how to fuck to make music like they make music i don't fuck i don't even know i'm just assuming to make do buy music which is like fucking way down here compared a comparison like i know what it takes just to get me there and it's like Endless hours of work. Hmm. Obsession. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's just what it is for all of us, right? It's just uh, complete obsession. But, yeah. Uh, and and then you get other bands like uh, Hot Water Music, you know, oh, yeah. which Chris Cresswell plays in now. It's yeah. just like yeah, mind-blowing yeah. it, and mind-blowingly amazing. amazing fit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, like the perfect fit, right? Like, like couldn't imagine a better fit uh, yeah. for that. I mean, just, Yeah. Which sort uh, of yeah, I'm stoked for all of them, right? And That's so fucking cool, big time, man. Um, so That's another band. Of that, that that was another huge one for us that I that I have to music, put on yeah. the same on the same just to complete the thought about like the propaganda, like the hot water music, the same thing because seeing that band, that's when you know I was you know. It, we're talking a, a, a hundred capacity venue in New Bedford. Nobody knew who they were. I, mean, they, they, I think they maybe had an album out on No Idea. Um, they had an amazing show with passionate, passionate fans, which is a great reflection on where yeah. we come from in New Bedford. It's mm -hmm. always been an amazing music scene here, which really knowledgeable uh, 
uh, fans, but seeing those shows and like no one's wearing a shirt, it's like fucking insane, <laughs> like insanely hot, like you yeah, know, yeah. like in this tiny thing. But seeing everybody like, you know, just that type of um motion, unbridled with, passion, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that blew my fucking mind, man. Yeah. Like, and I've seen some amazing shows, even in my backyard here. I mean, fucking, you know, Lifetime played da- back here. You know, like, oh wow, like, like tons. Like, they, they used to have like huge hardcore fest down here. Like, uh, uh, like uh, I think Trust Kill Records. Uh, I don't know if that label's still around, but it was uh, in Ferret Records and stuff like that. Yeah. They would like have a lot of like, you know, their bands like play here. So, um huge new bedford hardcore festivals like you know every couple years and stuff but anyway uh yeah i'm sorry fritzy no no <laughs> yeah. man dude, much Never rather listen to you on. talk than I me go, i can go on and on down memory lane <laughs> <laughs> i was just gonna say like perfect fit like it was a nice little segue into one of the questions i have which is when i heard you guys signed a creator destructor my first thought was like well that's a fucking perfect fit of course and then yeah. I was like, then my second thought was like, whoa, what fucking took so long? Because I don't know, like, why that hadn't happened. Because it's just, it seems so perfect for you guys. But, like, I've been a big fan of Creator Destructor for a long time. Uh, big Heart Sounds fan. Big Light the City oh, yeah. fan. So, like, I'm a big fan of Ben. And um, so, like, what has that been like? Like, Cause I'm I'm a huge fan of them already, and like seeing that meshing of you guys together is just I mean it was like perfect to me. It's 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 incredible. Like Ben's, you know, one of my best friends. I mean, like I have so much fun with him. Uh, uh, he met we. I guess I'll take it back down memory lane again, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Met, That's what this is all I, about. Yeah. Yeah, I like to go down memory lane, so like I just like keep so my brain can keep, <laughs> keep things, you know. I smoke a lot of weed; shit doesn't last in my brain. <laughs> so whenever something pops in my brain, I gotta like use it or I'll lose it, you know. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> we met Ben, Ben and Laura. Yeah. Um, up from also from Heart Sounds, met them both. Uh, they were both I think 15, 16 years old. Fuck. And it was in San Jose, California. We were on tour with Strung Out. I think it must have been like 2004-ish. I think it was kind of like right around when we got signed. And it was just this like young metalhead dude and, and, and you know, guy and gal. And they were like super friendly and like knowledgeable knowledgeable about the band and stuff. And, I, and, and they were like, yeah, like we don't, we'd like, you know, Strung Out, but like they didn't like punk. They didn't know. They weren't into punk. Yeah. Or a super metal. And yeah. like, and, and I was like, cool. Ah, oh, cool. Like, um, you know, and we we're chatting and it turns out that, that, that the late Trevor Sternad, you know, rest in peace. Fucking great guy. Um, Trevor had, had, were, uh, had befriended, uh, Ben and Laura early on and had kind of like said, Oh, you got to listen to this band, to this punk band. Like, you know, you'll really like the lyrics and stuff like that. And, and gave Ben, uh, yeah, mute, our, our first record, mute. Print. Print, yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah. So that's how, that's how the, they, Ben kind of came into my life. So I just want to, I mean, thank you, yeah, Trevor. You no. Know, yeah. That's wild. Uh, Trevor's <laughs> unite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was, so it was like, Oh shit. Like, uh, and my first thing was like, Oh, the guy from Black Dahlia Murder, like likes your band. Like that, <laughs> I think that was the first thing that I thought, yeah. that, that you know when Ben told me, I was like, oh, that's trippy. Uh, but <laughs> that's like that's uh, always wild when someone says something like that to you, and you find out that like someone that you either like know of or respect has some kind of like it likes you, but has never like reached out or anything like that. Because like I'm sure if that dude reached out to you, you'd be so stoked, right? <laughs> But yeah. like, oh yeah! Know, every now and again, you find out stuff like that. And you're like, "Fuck, man! Let's be friends. Yeah. Be friends with me. Yeah. <laughs> Just say what's up." <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you know, meet meet meeting uh, Ben and Laura was awesome, and I was like, so like, oh right, cool, you know, nice to meet, nice to meet you guys. So like, what you know, and I'm getting you know, getting to know them, and 
you know, at the show and I'm like, so, you know, what do you guys, and he's like, he's like, yeah, we play in a band. Like, and know that they were in like, got, they're just, they're like another protest the hero, like fucking, you know, 16 <laughs> years old and just nasty. Yeah. Signed. And they were like touring the world and shit. They're, they're on like a big metal label. Uh, oh shit. It, it, like, uh, like, yeah. And, in, in, you know, tour the world with, uh, their band is, uh, light the city. Yeah. Right, right, right. And, and yeah. Laura's, Laura's a singer, incredible voice. Like that's sort of how we, we knew them. And like, he kind of got more into punk rock, I think, after, you know, hearing us. And then, of course, like, you know, the goats, propaganda and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah so, so you guys are like instrumental in the creation of heart sounds. Yeah. Basically, you're, you're responsible, Trevor. That's I it. <laughs> you take Do you all guys the get credit. royalties on that shit? And, um, yeah. You like how I subliminally dropped that in there? <laughs> so we're interviewing pretty- <laughs> Laura coming up. <laughs> Uh, and oh, I'll make her. sure to tell her that you take all the credit for Heart Sounds. Yeah. I'll tell her that just <laughs> yeah. to make sure. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my spot. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 awesome. Yeah, they, yeah, they're yeah they're the best. So like I we've been friends with them forever since then, and you know I've, of course played with Heart Sounds a ton. Yeah. And like at one point, you know, and I was chatting with uh. I was chatting with Ben one day on the phone and I was like, dude, Ben, I need some advice, bro. This is kind of like out of the blue. This was years ago. This is probably like four years ago, five years ago. And this is kind of how it went down. I'm like, listen, this, this label, I'm not going to name the label, but they, sure. they're like an, or like a overseas label. And like this guy offering us like a lot of money uh, to like do a record. Right. So like mm-hmm. something like, 40 grand, 50 grand, or something like that. And I'm like, I'm like, that's pretty dope because like, I'm looking at like, my studio wasn't done yet. Like, yeah. uh, like I'm sitting in it now, but it was yeah. like, it was like, fuck dude. Like, you know, pretty tempting offer. But the dude in the label gave me the ick, like real ah, bad. Yeah. Like, you know, something where you know, it's like, oh dude, this ain't right at all. Like, I don't feel, this is no good, you know? Uh, and I'm just asking Ben, I'm like, dude, what's the deal? And he's like, Trev, if this, if they're giving you the ick, then like, just, do it, just do it yourselves, you guys can get fucking, you know, he, and, and he, you know, he was like, oh, just do a fucking, do a fucking Kickstarter or, or, or something like that. And then and I'm like, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm not. We're, I am not organized enough to do like <laughs> a, any shit like that. <laughs> like, yeah. like I'll just fucking go to the bank or some shit. You know, that's like what I would do or whatever, you know. Uh, but, he, you know, he's like, ah, oh, well, you know, you know, I mean, he's, he's like, do what you want to do. Like, I'm like, you guys crazy. Like, you know, you guys should just fucking put it out yourselves now and just fucking whatever. You know, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, I'm like, thank you for talking it out with me. You know, yeah. you like, you're my, you like, you're my, you're my dude. Mm. So, uh, he hit me up probably, uh, probably a couple months later and said, Hey, I don't want this to be weird or anything, but like, I want to throw my hat in the ring on, on this <laughs> album. You know, like, you know, I'm like, word, sick. Uh, you know, I don't know. I never considered it before. Like, I don't know if you've seen Creative Destructor. They have some of like the heaviest yeah. bands. Yeah. Oh yeah. In the game, heavy shit. Mm-hmm. You know, Gulch and Tsunami and stuff. Yeah. Like, like heavy hitter, hardcore stuff. And I knew back then. I knew like four years ago what kind of album I wanted to do. Oh, I wanted the next record to be like, or of like, uh, dare I say, top forty. Yeah. Sounding. <laughs> yeah, a little. Yeah, really. What I wanted to do. Uh, that's where, but not as a like. Oh, this is where we're gonna be now. Here's where we're going now. This is what we're gonna sound like because the thing that I like, the thing that I'm proud of of the band, if I may sound like self indulgent, is that <laughs> those Please albums don't sound myself. the same. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, they, no do. they don't. Yeah. They all sound different, and I love that. Like, but it's intentional, too. I don't want too. to lose that. Right? It's Great. intentional. Like, Career Suicide, there's awesome songs that didn't make it on that record because they didn't fit what the vision was for that record. Right? Like, that record was meant to be a certain way. And so, as long as you do, as long as it's intentional, like, 
it's amazing. That's like, yeah, I, I think anything done with conviction, yeah, oh, you know, is like a worthwhile endeavor. Yeah, you know, for sure. if you're gonna if you're gonna put your energy into something, you know, with the amount of hours it takes. For me, before I get into something, I have to have a grandiose, fucking, yep, thing. At Idea. least in my own yeah. in my own head, at least. Or that, I, or that, or when I get grandiose with my bandmates, which I do, like in all the time, it's probably mad cringy if, if, <laughs> if we put a camera on it. But like, I'm totally like the ultimate hype man for my band and my bandmates. You yeah. know, when we're when when we're doing this shit. So I feel like if feel like for me creatively, I don't know if it's like this, you roadie, but like for me, like I have to have like, oh, this is. This is gonna be our, uh, you know, whatever the fuck it is. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like I have to like fuck. You like, like conceptualize big... the entire thing before you create it, right? Yeah. Yes. I don't give a flying fuck if it ends up being, uh, you know, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But I have to have, have to have something to to look forward to or to look at at the end of the mm -hmm. day. I can't just have like a. Here's a collection of songs. For me, that doesn't cut it in terms of like I um experience. No. You want it one cohesive shit. piece of art, right? And I feel the same yeah. way about it. And like, yeah, it's easy to just like slap a concept on something lyrically and be like, it's one. But like that's not yeah, that's not it, right? Like it needs to work together. I think something that's unique that you guys do is that yes, all of your records do sound very different, but there is this string that drives through all of them that makes them very uniquely a Wilhelm scream. Yeah, you know, like a thousand percent. You're not going to listen to Mute Print and then listen to the newest record and go, "Are these the same band?" Like you never would. They, they're definitely Wilhelm records, right? Mm -hmm. They just have awesome. different sound to them, which is awesome. Fucking same, same, but different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so confusing to like articulate what we're fucking talking about because like they're all different. Good thing. Good sound. thing we're on a on a podcast right now. We're, we're all we're trying to do is articulate <laughs> things for people to to hear and talk about. Um, <laughs> it's funny we're recording some of that stuff with Bill, and it, like he would he would be like, you know, we had never worked with a producer before, right? And what a fucking producer to start with. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's so sick. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I'm like, I'm like, fuck. I better, we better be, like, prepared, like, motherfucker, you know? Mm -hmm. And we're writing these songs. It's just like we're trying to kind of, you know, make them as cool as we can, right? Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of the times, a lot of people here in our band for the first time, a lot of them would be like, "What the fuck is this? What is going on?" You know. So, and it was it was like that with Bill too. The point where, but when we recorded that first album, Mew Print, we didn't have time to like work on songs. Like, hey, should we do this chorus again? Mm -hmm. You know, mm. not because I didn't like want that, but we didn't have like time for that. You know, yeah, and man. then as the as as we as we went to do our second record and third record with them, it was sort of a similar a similar thing. That the the production was a lot of like, you know, oh, can you fucking pull this? It was like it was like machismo, like pulling off pulling off your shit and being like the best at what you do. You, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like it was sort of like a was it was it was it was like cool it was like it was mad jockish we were mad jockish you know and like bill was <laughs> yeah, mad jockish yeah. and jason we were, we were super jockey about it but like but it was cool you know uh but but when we're doing those albums bill is kind of going like oh yeah dude yeah he'd start saying things to me like avoid success man avoid success <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, yeah, man, avoid success. Cool. Good note. Then it, and then later on, I'd be like, what does that mean? <laughs> like, it, it, like, I was trying to say, fuck it up, dude. <laughs> Make it so people don't like it. <laughs> sort of. Like, it's, it's, it's sort of like, oh, fuck. And like, I, I always knew something about my music at 
um, make more growers showers i feel like a lot of the albums that like uh yeah. like uh if i do a lot of stuff on it was like okay these are growers yeah and like bill had like I'm not saying it that he was being disrespectful in any way because he meant it as a fucking super compliment yeah because yeah, he yeah. was like yo you guys are fucking unique like mm-hmm. you guys come from like a fishing city <laughs> shit like like you guys are like, you guys talk to each other like Without kid gloves, you know, because we didn't, we just like tore each other apart, and like they, they, they like, you know, they liked how, cra- how, how like crass and open we were with every, with each other, and yeah. I think they liked the relationship that we had. So, I think, I don't think that they knew they weren't recording like uh, taking back Sunday, right? Yeah, record yeah. here. You know, mm-hmm. This is not. Is not like a uh, make or break hit 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 record. Although, if you asked like me, I'd be like, "Yo, I'd love to have like a fucking. I'd love to sell <laughs> as many records of this as fucking possible." Yeah, of course. You know? But then, yeah. but, but then, one of my idols is saying, "Yeah, Trev, yeah, f- oh, nah, avoid success, man. Hell yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> hell yeah." And I'm like, oh, hell yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, but I mean, like, would you write stuff like that? That's like intricate and tricky and like hard harder for like a mainstream audience to really digest yeah you're not going to grow as big of an audience but the audience you grow is going to be fucking there forever because there's yeah. like you build so yeah. much stuff into your songs that there's so much like re-listenability to it and um people love delving into shit you know yeah uh, i i i did feel confident about that one thing i we've always been lucky is we've had fucking awesome fans you, like mm. even back from the smack and isaiah days and a lot of these people even from the smack and isaiah days that came and seen us at this garage or this like yeah fw hall or whatever they still come out to see us play you know and, like people that That's know amazing. like back catalog and kind of like just kind of stuck with us because like you were saying they it, they like that they like that like common thread throughout our mu- our albums and our music you know so we have been very lucky very mm-hmm. lucky to sit you know f- you know for that of course when you're when you're 25 and you're just like so broke yeah. like you want to produce i want yeah. i was like bill let's do a let's make one of these a hit song then yeah. dude come on let's man. make one of these like damn I want one of these things they're going to play at the MTV beach house come on <laughs> Yeah, you know? it's like sprinkle some sprinkle some of your like silly girl <laughs> good things. Sprinkle some bikeage on this shit. Man. Oh yeah, I mean cans, canned beans, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, now that you have your studio, like where you live, d- do you have a hard time leaving the studio and going to like just do non-studio stuff? Yeah, or do you find yourself tough. just in there all the time? In here all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as much as possible. Like if I'm not if I'm not like working on other people's music or like do, doing mixes, then then I'm working on I'm working on my own. Right? It's yeah. and it's also still kind of like a you know still still building stuff. I'm still like improving on things like as as we're in here as well. So yeah. it's fun. Mm-hmm. I I'm either I'm either in here or like. I'm hanging out with my wife, like, or like watching Sopranos or something. Yeah. Oh, fuck it. Yeah. Neither here or watching Sopranos, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, did you, um, did you and Mike oh, record cool. that Pears record? Sorry? Did you and Mike record that Pears record? I feel no, like I was, remember him. Mike, Mike did work on both of those Pears records. They did it. They, uh, that was uh, our sound guy, James Witten. Who also worked mm. on uh, "Lose Your Delusion" with us, right, 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 and 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 Mike Subpoena. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, they, I, they I, I guess thought it was talk you about, that those records are fucking amazing. They are oh, there's oh, dude, that band is so awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah. that's another band that like walks a line between like hardcore metal and punk and, and in the strangest ways, and it's like fucking wonderful, right? One of the heaviest parts, like, one of the heaviest things, and uh, like. Ever. I think it's on I think it's not on their latest one it's on the one uh, I think Green Star yeah there's there's one song on there where it just like it breaks down like so heavy mm-hmm. and in in true pairs fashion you know it you know it it, it 
you know, it it doesn't repeat and it's kind of like its own thing right yeah, yeah. Dude, they played that for me when james and mike played that for me like i almost shat myself bro like as <laughs> how heavy that was bro <laughs> yeah like like holy fuck they did they go for it yeah i'm a massive fan i think uh brian Priest, the guitarist like i think i think he's like a musical genius guy yeah and he's his his fucking playing too like his his like right hand wrist action is like insane well so yeah i can't say good enough you know, enough things about that band yeah i brought them up because i thought you had produced them but i was mistaken when mike was telling me about that i remember we were in saskatoon you remember we played like a fucking university bar or something like that in <laughs> saskatoon <laughs> Yeah, in Saskatoon. Or it was sort of like a huge. Was it sort of like a huge restaurant? So like a lot of wood. Yeah. Everywhere, yeah. and then and then it's like, and it turned into mat. Like it went from huge restaurant to like huge venue. Yeah. I don't I know mean, how I, they did I it. I don't know if it was huge. I remember the back room. Like there was like a, a like a pipe break, and it smelled like fucking human feces, and it was just like <laughs> any other back room, like a small room with dicks on the walls. But he was telling me about it, and he was like, yeah, we produce that band Pears. And I thought he was saying Paris? Like, you know, that band, it's like P-V-R-I-S. And at the time, that was like the biggest band on earth. And I was like, yeah, what What the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> Mike's, Mike's Detroit accent. <laughs> yeah. His Michigan accent. Rolling in cash right now somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I didn't, he, like, I never clarified yeah, that evening that it was anything other than Paris. And we got back to the bus and I was talking with someone about it. And they're like, no, dude, he said pears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me. <laughs> and that's what inspired me to check out pears. And I fucking love them. Oh, they're amazing. Yeah. Mm. There, there was, there was talk of me uh, uh, helping out. I think that. They they wanted me to do some like vocal production with them, mm. like to you know work on some of the vocals and stuff. But I, I think that that was like right when they were gonna be uh, working with Fat Records. There, I think they were mm. signed to Fat at the time, and I think Fat Mike wanted to work on it, like, wow. wanted to like uh, you know produce and stuff like that. I like man, phenomenal band. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have I have a question. This is like a gear related question, which is Ooh. how do you survive a whole tour fucking lugging that fucking custom around on stage with you all the time? That thing's got to weigh 10 pounds. <laughs> and like, I think in yeah. Detroit, the, on this last go around, the fucking strap peg tore out. And you held the thing <laughs> up for the rest of the song with no strap and played that thing. Yeah. Like, how do you do that? I know, like, or basically, George Harrison every, style. Every, <laughs> per, every professional guitar player that I follow that, that, that uh, started out on Les Pauls were like, yeah, I had to get off of this because I can't do a whole tour because it's just so much weight and customs are hev the heaviest ones out of all of them because it like it's just pure fucking mahogany it's just a giant thick hunk of fucking mahogany like how do you do that i don't know it's all i know <laughs> i have like one i got like a i got one like massive muscle in my back <laughs> that's just from fucking just from like it, say it there. yeah hump. Oh yeah, God. yeah. I don't know. It's something about it. Like, like I was talking uh, to Pete from the from the Bouncing Souls about this. Like, like we were with them a co uh, last month, and because uh, everybody that every guitarist that has a Les Paul, we end up talking about the Les Paul. Yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. wait, the weight does come up, and like his reasoning was like pretty much the same as mine. It's like I need need. It's just rock and roll to me, like having a, a guitar that heavy. It's just rock and roll and like 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 playing it playing it low. It's just like having a nice hunk of nice hunk of wood yeah. there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's just what I'm used to. Even like since I was like a kid, like, you know, I've always had Les Paul style guitars. Yeah. I also like my a, a guitar that I played for years, um is uh the Paul 
is like an all walnut guitar and it's like and it's probably a good like five six pounds lighter and that was a guitar that i played a lot a lot throughout the years but even compared like i also have an esp eclipse that yeah. i love it's like half the weight even yeah. in the other one you know so like it's like a different and, and for some reason with the with the lighter guitars I like to wear i like to play i don't know why this is but i like to play it a little higher up but nipple the, ride lighter guitars yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah on yeah, the nipples i and like it right that reminds me of like what's the guy uh dean ween you guys know the band oh ween? yeah dean ween oh yeah. yeah i think it was dean ween the guitarist uh so he's like oh so where do you put you, you, a, a, a quote that he has and he's like oh for, uh buddy of mine told me back in the day either wear your guitar below your dick or above your dick <laughs> Never but covering never your on. dick. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so <laughs> Dean Ween is the guy from the band Ween? Yeah. Yeah. The guitarist. <laughs> so he just Dean was Ween. like, we're Ween because uh, I'm Dean Ween. Or was he uh, like, I think the I'm other gonna... guy is Gene Ween. <laughs> <laughs> no. Dean Ween to Dean Ween. I could be wrong. <laughs> so they've changed their last names to like, to the band's name or their last no one's last name know. is Ween, is it? Well, we'll have to look I, it up. I don't know. They I've never I've never like never like loved a band as much as I love that band without like knowing fucking shit about them. I don't know anything <laughs> about them. It's almost better. Dude, I know so little about them that I thought we were talking about Weedus for the most part. You know, teenage dirtbag. Teenage dirtbag. Yeah. It is. Like, what's... <laughs> it's Gene and Ween. Uh, Gene and Dean Ween. <laughs> That's a tongue twister, baby. But I think, I think they changed their names to Ween. To Ween. Okay. To match the band. But their names previously no, were Gene and Dean. Like, like they were like called the, Gene the and dudes, Dean. The dudes were. Um, yeah, yeah. So the name of the band comes from a, a combination of the words wuss and penis. Um, I mean, it it just is a short form of wiener. Yeah. So uh, Aaron, yeah. So Aaron Freeman and Mickey Melchiondo. Oh, were those the guys are their real started names. Started the band. Yeah. Honestly, oh, I shit. don't even I don't know a single Ween song that I can recall, but after hearing that they changed their names to Gene and Dean Ween to go with their fucking band, yeah. they're my favorite band on earth, Odie. dude. Odie, if you go and listen to Ween later, you're gonna be like, What the fuck is Trev on, bro? Like, what the fuck I'm is this? I'm gonna listen to Ween. I kinda have yeah. to now. I, I recommend starting with album Chocolate and Cheese. Chocolate and Cheese. Beautiful. Chocolate and cheese. <laughs> fuck yeah. yeah. Sort of had like a. They sort of had like a hit on that. I mean, there's so there's so many good out uh, songs on 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 a, on on this particular album. There are like so many good ones. Uh, but like talk about like style changes. Each song is a different like genre. Of oh music. really? Well, the, well, I'm looking forward to it. Like, I'm gonna the album I'm gonna become cover, a huge freaking the album head. cover when I was a kid. Right for for chocolate and cheese was just like what. Risque. Yeah, very. So, yeah. yeah. I'm going to look it up. Yeah. I had a song out. I think it was kind of like a hit. It was like called Voodoo Lady. It's like Voodoo Lady. Shaking that stick. You're driving me crazy. <laughs> it, and it's like doing the stuff that you do. Knocking me out with your voodoo. Oh, Got me crazy kinda... with that boogie, oogie, 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 oogie. <laughs> you're driving right. me crazy yeah. with that boogie, boogie, boogie. Now the cover of this is very song. familiar. Yeah. It was like an alternative rock hit. Oh yeah, I must have masturbated right, to this a yeah. hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> um, where is this? Uh... There's a lot of controversial material ah. on that one for sure. <laughs> All right, so I I have a game for us to play, uh, and it's awesome. a, a trivia game. I gotta pull up my notes here. It's a trivia game about the sound effect, the Wilhelm scream, right? The famous sound effect uh, and how much you know about this. And Rody wants to play too because he hasn't seen the questions yet. 
And also, he told me some things that he believes to be true about the sound effect, which are not true, and he couldn't be farther <laughs> from the truth. So I'm really looking forward to this. I will let you answer first, and then I will try my best. Okay, so what is the original name of the Wilhelm Scream sound effect? Because it's not the Wilhelm Scream. I'll give you three choices. Okay. Okay. Is it A, fat man sits on balls? Is it B, man getting bit by an alligator? Or C, the German Kaiser's death? Um, I go first, Rudy, or you want to go? Yeah, yeah, no, you go first. You <laughs> should know these. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to go with the alligator. It is. Oh, wow. Yep. That nice. is correct. A movie, I was going to say a, the German Kaiser's called- death. Good guys are nice. Actually, yeah, I was thinking of that one because I was like, "Oh, is this guy like, could be like a?" That's trick, Fritzy but... trying to fucking trick us. Yes, it is. It's yeah. me trying to trick you. Yeah. yeah. The movie, the movie, Distant Drums. Yes, that's what it's from. That's correct. Oh. That was probably one of the questions. Um, no. <laughs> that would be wild for you to not know that, though. Like, I'm sure you get shit about the Wilhelm scream all the time. Yeah, right, I've had sh- a few. Pe- they, they've made a couple documentaries I, oh, yeah. a, about them where they sort of like mention us. And I, I think I got an email oh, the other day about somebody that's doing their own. Do- I don't know how many documentaries. This got a lot of documentaries. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> this sound effect. How many does it need? Like, <laughs> uh, so I got it kind of covered. I could probably, I could probably nail it in like three, <laughs> four sentences. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the man credited. With the recording, the original Wilhelm scream, or man getting bit by an alligator. Uh, his name is Sheb Woolley. Uh, and what is he most famous for besides the sound effect? Is it A, he was the stormtrooper that banged his head on the door in Star Wars. B, writing and recording the smash hit, the purple people eater. Or C, being the most celebrated bird hunter at Nashville Airport to avert bird strikes on airplanes. Oh. Ooh. Those are all very specific. <laughs> oh. Now, there oh, is man. a Wilhelm scream in fucking Star Wars when that stormtrooper gets hit, right? True. That's true. But would they okay. have put the original dude in... Stormtrooper garb. I'm thinking Chev has a set of skills. <laughs> Particular set of skills. He's a bird hunting man? He's a bird hunting man, I think. He, re- wrote, that. he wrote and recorded the smash hit, The Purple People Eater. Wow, oh, wow. Yeah. This guy's incredible. Yeah. Man, Chev's got it going on, man. So how did it get its actual nickname? As the Wilhelm scream. How did it change from man getting bit by alligator to the Wilhelm scream? Is it A, it's when the character Kaiser Wilhelm II was killed in the movie All's Quiet on the Western Front. They use the sound effect. B, fucker. <laughs> when Private Wilhelm is shot in the knee with an arrow in the film Charge on Feather River. They use the sound effect. Or C, the helmsman on Jabba's palace barge who gets tossed into the sarlacc pit who formerly uh they used the sound effect on that his name was will the will helmsman okay oh fritz you piece of shit (laughs) (laughs) gotta go b it is b wow which one was that uh quiet on the private wilhelm gets shot in the knee with an arrow in the film charge on feather river what year did that film come out? Like 1955, maybe? Something Holy like that. mackerel. So there was only yeah. like 10 years of... Uh... They threw. They basically took it on a tape and threw it in a closet with a bunch of other sound effects. And the sound designer for Star Wars remembered it from seeing it in that movie and went, I wonder if we still have that. And went digging around and found it. And that's how it got used in Star Wars, so... And then yeah. ultimately everywhere. And then everything everywhere. after that. Um, Bert, did, a fun fact, uh, he, 
he had so here's what my isn't why Wilhelm scream is a Wilhelm scream the Wilhelm scream because and this is like my my 24 year old brain 23 year old brain at the time this is how I thought I thought that okay Lucasfilm probably owns the rights of Wilhelm to the name Wilhelm scream because Ben Burt was the sound designer right. on all those movies and stuff. So I kind of figured like, and there was a, and I was like, they're going to like, they're probably going to sue us or some shit. So let's be, we're, we're not the Wilhelm scream. We're a Wilhelm scream. We're just one of them. We're just one, one of them. <laughs> just one of them, you know? And like, may, like maybe like hindsight is probably pretty paranoid. I probably should have said, oh, fuck it. Let's just do the Wilhelm scream. It's probably a better name than O Wilhelm scream. Like if we're being honest here, I don't know. Then this film was fucking suing everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Sued like there was like, you ever heard of the, the, the record label dead droid records? No. Or they exactly. sued everybody over he, he droid. He sued them out of sued existence. Them. Yeah. <laughs> droid sued was them. like their baby. They sued everybody over that. Yeah, I don't the think that you were droid. wrong to be. Yeah. yeah, I don't think you were wrong to be uh, anxious <laughs> about that possibility because it was a very real and probably still is a very real possibility. I think yeah. I I'm think like, George, it turned out. We're not the Wilhelm scream, George. We're a. I, I, I think it turned out pretty well. It, it's uh, <laughs> it's good. So the last question is: Which of these films or film series did not feature? A Wilhelm scream. Oh, uh, all of the Indiana Jones movies. B. Poltergeist. C. Howard the Duck. D. Batman Returns. Ooh, oh, it's it's between Poltergeist and uh, Batman Returns. I'm gonna say, oh no, they did you. I think they did use it in Batman Returns. Be when uh, Christopher Walken mm. turned out the building. Yeah, yeah. All right, spoiler alert. From <laughs> 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 a movie that came out <laughs> fucking, fucking 20 years ago. Team 90 nothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm gonna um, go with Poltergeist. It's out all. It's in all of them. There's, there's no. Oh, there I'm, hasn't been a movie in the last. Trick it, question. <laughs> yeah, trick question. Uh, final question. What's the See, secret to make? What's the secret ingredient to making the perfect grilled cheese sandwich? I know this. Ooh. Rody already knows. There's only one answer. Never done this, but I have a feeling answer is mayonnaise. It oh, is! Yeah, yes! <laughs> Never done that. <laughs> it is. It's mayonnaise. <laughs> I heard about it. All right. Looks good. I have, I have one more thing, <laughs> and I just want to, like, this is a weird six degrees of separation thing. So my wife is a huge New Kids on the Block fan. Right, this like, is very important. Like ridiculous new kids on the block fan. Um, she is friends with uh, another huge new kids on the block fan from Boston named Paula, who is the cousin of your drummer Nick. Oh, and so my wife is oh. friends with Nick's cousin, and so we have this like weird six degrees awesome. of separation thing going between this and like yeah. And so that's not where I thought that was going. No, at all. I, it is because I am <laughs> obligated then to ask the question because my wife makes me ask everybody we have on this show the question: Do you know Donnie Wahlberg? Don't. Oh God, don't cry. know. I don't. But I've had Wahlburgers before. Yeah. Are they good? good? Yeah. No, yeah. You know. Yeah, pretty <laughs> good. Dad. I've that's, never had them. That's Bad. the same response my wife gave when she had it. She's like, yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Yo, Trevor, who is your Batman? You know what I mean? Like, who is Batman to you? Oh. You know what I mean? Man to me. Is it my Michael Batman? Keaton? Is it Michael Keaton? <sighs> this might this might be uh a controvers- Ben Affleck. Oh, really? My. Going Affleck. Yeah. Wow, Batfleck. When I was growing up. Hey, you're going to have to great. justify that one. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. Check it out. I'm grow- When I was growing up, I 
collected comics. Like, I, it was a problem, right? It was fucking, uh, it was a thing. Sick. It was one of the hardest, like, addictions I ever had to break. I had to, like, so I could, like, save up money and get, like, a drum set. There's, you know, yeah. so, like, I had to trade, I had to trade that obsession for another obsession, you yeah. know? Um, and for me, I had to, like, cut down to, like, one or two a month or whatever that, you know, to keep, keep doing it or whatever. And a lot of that was, like, the Frank Miller shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so a lot of the Frank Miller stuff... Oh, like the Sin Cities and like his run on his runs on Batman, Daredevil and stuff like that. For me, the Dark Knight Returns, which a lot of the a lot of the new movies kind of based, based a lot of their shit on on that, you know, yeah. a more uh, adult take yeah. on it. So growing up, I'm like looking at it and it's like Dark Knight Returns, we're talking about an, is an older Batman. Mm -hmm. world weary basically like comes out comes out of retirement to do what's right you know because to make that that sacrifice you know and he's a he's a genuine nutcase too you know he's kind of he's crazy oh, as well I, I can fucking see in, this in like oh. insane moral insane moral compass and just had the look now Ben Affleck a lot of things wrong with movies that he was in Wait, are you just saying Ben Affleck because it's like the Boston connection? Oh, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I started wa dude, I started watching The Town the Other Day and I'm like, I thought I liked this movie. This movie fucking sucks. Like, <laughs> like he had a lot to do. I think he directed that movie yeah. and he wrote that movie. Oh, he yeah. stars in that movie. He's all about, yeah, so I'm generally not like a Ben Ben Affleck fan. Like, see, when you were talking about New Kids on the Block, yeah. I thought you were gonna drop like a mall rats quote on me, oh. like which was which was Ben Affleck saying like, "Who's your favorite new kid? Yeah. Call me Donnie. Call me Donnie." <laughs> that's where you, I thought that's where you were going with that. Don't make me get loose. Call me Donnie. <laughs> yeah, call me Donnie. Oh, uh, yeah. So Ben Affleck, when I'm when I saw that movie, I think it was uh, uh, Batman Superman, the first yeah, one that yeah. he was in, came out like. All the gadgets side or whatever. When I saw him on the screen, that was the first time that I was ever like, "Oh, that dude's that's fucking that's Batman." Uh, that's the oh, Batman like, from the comics that I've read. That that's is the Batman from the exactly, yeah, yeah. which is like to which 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 to me, like, this, don't like the Christian Christian Bale one. I didn't dig because he's wearing a fucking SWAT team outfit. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. obvious he's wearing a SWAT team outfit. Like for me, like. The character Batman, who's like probably my favorite of the comic characters, Batman, his whole look and his whole fucking reason for being, like, ah, he gets up to fucking work out like that to fucking look like he could take a bullet and yeah. he could still keep punching a dude, yeah, you know, mm. because he does because because that's a part of his psychosis. Yeah, wakes up every day and he just wants wants to take revenge. But doesn't he like kind of kill a bunch of people in that movie? Well, that's like, the like, other thing. It's like the uh, darker that Batman. That bothered me. But he's like the a darker, darker Bat Batman. And also, Affleck's got the well, chin big, for it. It's a big character flaw. I agree with you, Rody. That was a big fucking flaw that they made. And yes, dude, my Batman Affleck kills. had the best chin. The chin, I believe he had in a the Batman perfect chin that for kills it. motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I killed a uh, lot of dudes playing those Batman video games. That's true. Those yeah. games are a shit ton of fun. Yeah, they really are. Uh, they, yeah, yeah, and I, I'm sure, I'm sure, like the Michael Keaton Batman probably killed somebody. Oh yeah, he, right? he was trying to kill Jack Nicholson when he created the Joker. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love that, like that that Batman. Like people were so mad at Michael Keaton and like the casting of Michael Keaton when it happened. People were like, "Fuck that!" But it's like, I don't know. I was born mid '80s. I don't remember '89, so it's like that Batman casting is perfect to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, and and the the overall tone of those movies are really cool too. You know, I think it, mm. it was it's it it sort of had a it had a foot loaded uh, a foothold in the fantastic, yeah, mm. you know, fantastical kind of like whimsical like the Tim Burton, yeah, yeah. the Tim Burton the same like time, German expressionism, of, yeah. 
exactly the look of the like the in the the, the look of those movies. Uh, I was never and and Jack Nicholson uh, at points in that movie was fucking terrifying. Yeah. Know? Yeah, he was. That yeah. Because it like terrifying in almost a similar way to the way that um uh Heath Ledger was terrifying in that it was he wasn't like a scary monster. It was that this is a dude and he is fucked. Like his brain, yeah. it like c- complete sociopath. No, feels no shame or regret or uh, empathy for the people that he is fucking with. And like, yeah. those are the scariest people in the world. To my Joker, Jared Leto. He's damaged, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And such high hopes when they announced Jared Leto. I was uh, like, I was like, yeah, this could be kind of cool. Yeah, as soon and as that came first up, image came out, it was just uh, like, oh shit, <laughs> they fucked fuck. it. They fucked it. <laughs> Time, dude. Oh. And ah, uh, that's so that's so ridiculous. Uh uh, that was bad. That was so, so bad. Yeah, yeah. I, I like me some Ben Affleck, Batman. I don't know. You, Fuck you, yeah. You, you, I think you that's guys, cool. Are you guys Keaton guys or Christian Bale? Or? Yeah, I mean, like we're not super serious. I'm not a super serious no. Batman guy. I like Batman a lot. I've read some of the comics, you know, and shit like that, and I've seen all the movies. But um, I mostly just like <laughs> try and piss off my friend Malen with saying that Michael Keaton is Batman. Because he, he, he is a Christian Bale guy, right? Yeah, Malen. yeah. But he was born in the 90s, so... Yeah. yeah. Michael Keaton. <laughs> like, I'm a Keaton guy, because that's who is Batman. And, like, the bat dance and all that shit. Like, Prince doing the whole fucking record from that movie. And, yeah. like... Because um, I'm old. Like, I... That was, like... That was in my thing. But I like when people ask about it, I like to like go way off the reservation and tell them I'm a Val Kilmer guy. Oh. You know, I'd just like to say George Clooney to piss off people like, off. People are like, wait, Val Kilmer was Batman? And it was like, yes, Val Kilmer was Batman. And people forget it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a fuck George with people. Clooney, George Clooney Batman was like so oh, crazy. Yeah. yeah. Clooney the, Batman. The, the George Clooney one? With his fucking Thing nipples. That, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he has Bruce Wayne, he's just chill. He's just chilling around, like just being like, George Clooney. Watching, <laughs> yeah, watching that for the first time, like what the fuck is with this like nervous tick this guy has? Like character, I don't know if he meant to do this or whatever, but he's constantly doing this. Oh, I really? Think that's Clooney. Night at the Roxbury style, you yeah, know, like I think fucking what is love, lady, don't hurt me. Like the whole time. And it was it's so took me out of the movie so bad. Yeah. Oh. You know, as if like Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, <laughs> yeah. didn't do it the job. <laughs> do, do Dude, it. I kinda think that movie is good. Like here and that's like I know that's a controversial thing to say, but it kinda harkens <laughs> back to like the cheesiness of the nineteen sixties Batman where it's like, like the T V uh, show. It's not even trying to take itself seriously. It's just like fucked right out the gates. Like they start like on uh, the hockey skates and like just like it, yeah. it's satirical uh, almost. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I kind of think if that's what that movie was going for, they did a great job. But the best part about the, all the Batman <laughs> movies is there's something for everybody there, right? Like there's so many of them. They all have their own merits. They're all in like very different styles they're like i don't know i feel like there's something there for any batman fan to to latch on to like hamlet they'll be doing batman fuck yeah for mm. perpetuity never they'll yeah. never yeah. not be batman yeah. and so yeah. for some reason ever since the first superman movies they can't get a superman right no they really but, can't and Superman keeps getting fucked up, right? Like yeah. that first Superman got shot. Uh, what's his face? <laughs> fell off oh, a horse. Fell. Yeah. Oh, the you curse. Know, like, of, yeah. yeah. There's the like curse a Superman, Superman curse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Not Cowboys, so infallible fuck. in real life. Yeah. Oh. Not so super. Yeah. What's that Superman? What, what's his name? Uh, Affleck even played Superman in a movie. Affleck played Superman? Yeah. Wow. Like a gritty. It was, a, it was about, it was oh, about yeah, it was like the, the, uh, the actor's death. Yeah. Like the oh, George George Reeves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he shot him. I think he killed yeah. himself, right? I think that's about, yeah. Hollywood yeah, land. He, he got was, shot. Yeah. I don't know if it was him who did it or if it was someone else, shot. but he for sure got shot. I think <laughs> it was shot. probably Courtney Love. Um, it was probably Courtney Love. <laughs> <laughs> or he checks out. <laughs> so we, uh, <laughs> we on the Stupid Podcast, we do a thing every week right near the end where uh, Fritzy and I give one another oh, gifts. Yeah. And you, being our guest, have to decide which gift is better. It's a competition. Yes. And That's I've won awesome. a lot of them, but Fritzy's starting to catch up. So I yeah. have to so, send you this. I have to send it to you, Trev. I have to send you what I sent Rody. so give me a sec and I'll send it to you. Let me see what you got here. Now, the email he sent me is called, I painted you like one of my French girls. How many <laughs> French girls do you have there, Fritzy? All of them. Oh, this is unsettling. Uh, how do I send you this? Oh, Did you, I, you know AI what? this? I can put it in the chat in this channel. Hang on. Oh, yeah? Yeah. There's a chat log. A little chat log. Upload a file. Trevor does not know Donnie Wahlberg. Sorry. Are you still on your Yeah. Here he's great, guy. <laughs> Here he makes a hell of a burger. <laughs> Excellent burgers as well. Why can't he I makes a smash this? burger? Oh. That's Jenny very just popular now. In here. Why hey, can't Jenny. I find this file? I mean, I could just show you it on my okay, phone. Okay, just pull it up on and your phone. You, That's probably easiest. So this is, he's like painted an AI generated image. Is that what it is? Yeah, so you had AI this is not me. make you a face, make you a portrait. And then I took yeah. that portrait and painted the AI's interpretation of what your face looks like. Did you actually paint this? In Photoshop. In Photoshop, okay. Well, that's that's neat, Fritzy. It's great I like work. That. Yeah, truly. Now, here's the thing. Now, uh, is this couple, the one that you said can never be topped? I don't think this can be topped. Well, so, uh, two that weeks was, ago... Was Fritz's yeah. gift to you, Rody? Yeah, that was, yeah, my that gift was Fritzy's to gift to me. Yeah. Now, he says so, his gift to me can never be topped. I really don't think it can. So two weeks ago, I lost to Fritzy, and I made this. It's a it's Fritzy as a ghost with uh, long toenails. And he's got a mustache and he's got his hat on, right? So I lost that competition, uh, which is totally fair. But let me see if I can switch the camera out uh, because this is something that oh, has no. to be. You're gonna switch uh, to your phone camera so that you can take it over to what you have made. Yeah, essentially. Oh, fuck. I don't like Let's this. see if this works. Oh, that's like, not the one I'm looking for. I don't like this at all. Okay. Oh. There. You guys can see me? Yes. Okay. I got that image tattooed on my leg. No, you did not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Get Brody, out of I think, here. I think you won, bro. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, that's fucking awesome. And the funny thing and is, like, when I took it in, <laughs> the on guy was too. like, awesome. the guy was like, oh, uh, he was like, I had to make some changes. He redrew it. Uh, his name was Chris. His uh, thing is get stoked on it at uh, yeah. Instagram. Uh, but when I took it in, he was like, I had to redraw it um, because the feet were too small. And I was like, that's very funny because Fritzy's feet are fucking huge. And uh, that's perfect. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. That's yeah. awesome. You son of a bitch. Oh. Oh. <laughs> How am I going to beat this that? round, Fritzy? So like, what do you I think? can't. I can't. Now, even if I do but, get a tattoo of something, you will have already done it. So I can't, like. I don't know. Goes to body enhancements. Oh my god. 
Yeah, if you have, have like a there. second evil head installed of Rhodey's head <laughs> next to my head, something. That would be cool. Oh, fuck. Gift. I just fucked up the way my Discord looks so bad. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter because it's not recording you. That's true. All I got is Trevor. And you know what? Well, that's fine. That's okay. That's fine. <laughs> um, so I. <laughs> yeah. I think that's it, right? Uh, we have a thing. We end oh, yeah. every episode. So, Rody, will you tell him what he has to say? So, yeah, if you don't mind, uh, you say your name, what you do, you're listening to Podcast the Hero, and then tell the audience to eat shit and go fuck themselves. <laughs> hey, hopefully I can remember all that. I mean, you can just say eat shit and go fuck yourself if you want. <laughs> that's, pretty easy to, that's pretty easy to remember. <laughs> hey. What's up? This is Trev from Wilhelm Scream. Listening to Cast the Hero. Eat shit and uh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> right? That's so exactly good. right. It's so perfect. Shit, go fuck yourself. It was so yeah. fucking perfect. Fuck yourself and eat shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A lot of people say go eat shit. Go eat shit and, and fuck, fuck yourself. yourself. Like, don't you stand right here and eat shit in front of me. Go you... somewhere else. <laughs> eat shit. Go over there. <laughs> you can eat shit. You go over there and do it. <laughs> do it. On this podcast, you do it off yeah. camera.